So today, we're going to talk about Murray's Law, which is a consequence of the fluid dynamics at play in the mammalian circul circulatory system, um, as well as other fluid transport systems that operate with similar constraints. Um, Murray, the person who initially um, theorized this law, published his paper in 1926. And since then, it has been studied and verified um, to hold true in mammals as well as some plants. So to start off, uh, we're going to first generally consider the circulatory system. Um, at the center of uh, this, we have the pump, or the heart. It's a nice big red thing. Um, and the heart, so we know, pumps blood into the aorta. The aorta will then branch into arteries. Um, and those will turn into capillaries, which we're just going to draw as a series of small lines, because they are very small. Um, then the blood gets deoxygenated, and we have the opposite coming out the other side. Here we have the vena cava, um, and here we have veins going this way. So Murray was considering maximum efficiency uh, in the circulatory system, um, and so he kind of came up with two. Um, ideas of how um, energy is used by the circulatory system. Um, so the two energy costs um, that Murray theorized uh, were friction of the fluid flowing through um, the veins and arteries, as well as um, the energy cost of maintaining the total volume of blood. Um, so I'll just make a note. So, flow through pipes um, is well known and well described, um, and it's described by uh, something known as Purcell's Law, um, which gives us um, a velocity profile, um, B equals A squared minus R squared over 4, yeah times del 3p, which is the pressure gradient, which we're just going to call p. Because we're going to assume it's uniform across the pipe, and it will be in the axial direction of the pipe. Um, so what this looks like, if we have um, an example pipe, So looking at our pipe sideways, where the flow is coming out, um, and this is our direction of flow, we will have the parabolic velocity distribution. Looks something like that. Um, one of our conditions of laminar flow in a pipe um, is that the, there's zero velocity at the edge of the pipe. And then because the fluid has viscosity, uh, the shear forces applied from the walls are distributed um, in a parabolic manner such that the velocity is fastest in the center of the pipe um, and decreases towards the edges. Um, so, um, let's see. So if we're interested in the total discharge rate, like 
how much stuff is coming out of the pipe over here, um, and we'll call that Q. Q um, is going to be equal to the integral of 2 pi r and then times the velocity with respect to r. Um, and this equals positive and that positive pressure will make flow flow right just for simplicity's sake. Um, cool. So that means so if we start now with that q equals pi a to the fourth over eight eta times p and we're going to define Q equals F times L, where F is flow per unit length. You won't be able to see that. So P is equal to 8 eta Q over pi to the fourth. Um, yeah, so if we multiply, if we now we'll plug in, so now Q equals FL, and we're going to multiply both sides of the equation times F um, to get the total flow rate, and what we get there then is that PF equals 8 eta f squared l over pi a to the fourth. And this is going to be work or energy loss. So now we want to consider this, uh, the blood volume cost. So we're just going to say that um, B is a constant that describes um, the cost of maintaining a certain volume of blood. Um, so we're going to use this thing called, so B is a constant and B volume equals cost of blood maintenance. in energy, which equals B times pi A squared L, right? Mm -hmm. Times pi A squared L. Um, so, now the total cost, total energy cost E is equal to PF plus B vol, which equals 8 eta F squared L over pi A to the fourth plus B L pi A squared. Um, now to minimize the amount of um, energy, uh, we want to take the derivative of this and set it equal to zero. So D E D A equals zero equals 32 over 8 over 5 8 to the 5th plus 2 b l no there we go yep Again, that equals zero. Um, so now, 
Um, we can solve this and we can say that 2BL pi RA yeah, is equal to 32 Get that the magnitude of B is equal to, I really cannot read this, so I'm going to read a 16, theta F squared over pi squared A to the 6. Going back into our earlier equation, we can actually say uh, that PF equals B ball over T. So, this turns into that with algebra. <laughs> um, cool.